Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where on Wednesdays we discuss Japanese woodblock prints, paintings, history, and culture. Uh, today's Woodblock Wednesday dabbles in two areas. Um, I often discuss prints, but today I have uh, something special. I have a, a series of paintings that it actually goes with a very well-known um, print. So um, I think today's conversation should be interesting to those of you who collect prints or paintings. Um, before we get to that, I just want to acknowledge all of our viewers that know, that uh, check out these videos on YouTube. Welcome. Um, welcome to the channel. Uh, this is These videos are produced live on Facebook and then are archived on my website. Um, and all of the videos are on YouTube, of course. And so if you haven't been to my website, please check it out. It's collectingjapaneseprints.com where I have an assortment of amazing woodblock prints and paintings, as well as a, a bookstore and other things. You'll find a little bit of everything on my site. Um, it's designed for the collector, connoisseur, as well as the, the early sort of collector or someone just kind of interested in learning more. So now for today's Woodblock Wednesday, I have a woodblock print by um, the woodblock print artist, uh, Ono Bakafu. But Ono Bakafu is actually known as a painter, a Nihonga style painter. So he did probably thousands of paintings in his life. Um, he worked on commission as well as um, you know, he was, he was, de he, he designed and produced paintings at the and showed at department stores. Um, and also produce paintings after woodblock prints. Uh, so in this case, I have a book of his paintings. It's an album, and it correlates with a really famous uh, series he produced of Japanese fishes. Um, and so, you know, we, we get to see some of those designs in, in painting form as well as the woodblock print that he produced. Okay, so without further ado, let's go to the table and have a look. I want to I want to pan out a little bit. I have a light here. Um, you might be able to see it. There it is. And um, I think the light is is sort of capturing the nuances of this print pretty well. And so um, with videos, it's still not. Um, easy to capture all of the really wonderful printing aspects of the design. And so, you know, um, we'll, we'll, get, we'll come back to the print in just a moment. But what I have here is a really wonderful album. And this is, I would, I would estimate, this is from the late 20s, early 30s, just based on the style and the materials used. And um, I should point out that Ono Bakafu, his dates are 1888 through 1976. Uh, he, was, he died a year after I was born, uh, which is kind of interesting, um, at least to me. <laughs> and, um, and he produced several um, prints of fishes. He, there's two main series. They're, they're called Familiar Fishes of Japan, and the, the designs illustrate all kinds of fish. Uh, of Japan. And so this album, um, here we have a, a beautiful album um, cover. And if I could do this with one hand, of course we have those gold speckled inside covers that you normally see in Japanese books. And, and here we have sort of the title um, and what this book is in beautiful Japanese um, hiragana. And here we are with the designs. So he signed every single design that is produced in this book. And all of the designs are done in a format where it's almost like a diptych. The book folds in half like an accordion style Japanese you know, book. And the designs are sort of, you know, you, you could kind of imagine the, the, the sheet of, of the print. It's roughly the size of the print itself. 
Um, and so these designs are all that were found in his Familiar Fishes of Japan series 1 and 2. That's a really cool print. I think that's a uh, Japanese grouper. I just love the, the the background. Of course, the signature there. These are these are these are neat. And I, I'm going to go through this album quickly, so you could just see the various um, designs. And yeah, this one should look familiar. This is one of the most famous designs from the series. Um, his flying fish. And all of these prints, or uh, pa prints, paintings, are, you know, done in, in, in a manner that is reminiscent of the prints. There's a lot of sort of gold pigments that are used to highlight the different sort of, um, you know, scales and, and designs on, on the fish themselves. It's, it's really actually kind of cool. It's very reminiscent of the actual series of prints. And that is it. So I'll go through it quickly. Well, I'm going to go to the actual the page I'd like to highlight. So this is the this is the painting I want to show. Again, I'm going to back up a little bit. You could see uh, the this is the design known as flying fish. Or uh, I think the fish in J Japanese is called uh, tobiyo, 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 and um, the the design um, in terms of the 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 print was done in 1938, and so I will show here the prints. This is a very early impression. Well, we'll talk about different impressions in just a moment. I just kind of want to show the 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 design and how beautiful this is. And here you have the same design. Um, you have the same amount of fish. They're in a different sort of configuration. And it makes you wonder whether this book was produced first and in, in anticipation for the series. You know, he could have, this is sort of an artist's sketchbook of sorts, although everything is finalized. What I mean by that is there isn't any graphite, and all of the works are really finished, and each one is signed. So uh, it, I, I may, I, I'll walk that back. It's not necessarily a sketchbook, but it is a portfolio of beautiful um, designs of, from these uh, fish series prints. Now, if I was a gambling man, and I really don't wager on things, I would say that this album most likely was produced after the series. I think the series was really, you know, phenomenal. It was great. It brought Ono Bakufu great success and notoriety. And I think somebody came along and said, hey, um, I have your, your, your series of fish prints, and I'd like for you to produce a an album of watercolors highlighting some of the designs i think that's probably what happened but the book's not dated and it's there's no way of knowing but one way or the other the the designs aren't exactly the same as the prints and oft, oftentimes the artists who are commissioned to produce watercolors or paintings after the fact are usually asked to do it so that the that the designs look exactly like the finished prints. And in this case, all of the designs, quite frankly, aren't exactly like the the designs in the the series of the fish prints. So I don't know. It, it is sort of a it's going to be a mystery. You know, if you have any thoughts about that, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to comment uh, below and, and, um, and, you know, weigh in on what you think um, came first, the, the, the watercolor album or the prints. But nonetheless, I should say the finished print was done in 1938. And um, 
this print, you know, really highlights the, the height of the woodblock printing art form. I would say the, the late 20s um, through the 30s showcase some really incredible designs in Shinhanga. You know, I can think of some iconic works just off the top of my head um, in terms of Bijinga or even landscapes. But this design is one of those designs that also pops up. And it's one of those iconic designs that is not a landscape or a Bijinga. Um, but it's a stunning print. You know, and I want to zoom in and you could see the mica, the, the, the silver and uh, mother of pearl um, pigment. Uh, it's a mineral pigment that is applied in the in the printing process to showcase how beautiful these these lines are on the wings and and so for some of you who aren't familiar with this type of fish this is a fish that actually exists it is a fish obviously it, it swims and lives in the in the ocean but it's able to jump into the air and these these wing like sort of um, I mean, they are wings, I mean, in, in many ways, but they're, they're also um, fins, and so they serve as a double function for the fish. And so in the water, this gets the fish around, but um, once it leaps into the air, these sort of, these wing-like fins are able, they, they allow the fish to maneuver into the air a little bit now you don't see these flying out into the the sky they sort of glide across the water and they jump out of the water and then kind of glide in the air and then just and then land back in the water so they're in some ways flying fish is a little bit of a misnomer but nonetheless the artist here uh, ono bakafu captures these fish sort of gliding across the ocean surface and these beautiful swirling patterns that showcase the sort of the sea foam on the surface we have these beautiful graceful lines that echo the 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 wing fins of the fish and it also kind of give there's a beautiful flow to this uh design i want to zoom in so you could see what i mean Now, this is also an, interest, an interesting opportunity to have a conversation about Shinhanga. And um, by and large, Shinhanga designs were created by artists who first produced a painting, a watercolor, a drawing, but most likely a watercolor that was then um, sort of interpreted into a woodblock print. Now, Sosaku Hanga artists, their counterparts, often didn't produce um, watercolors or drawings. That, now, that's not always the case. There's clearly examples where they did. But many artists, and I'm thinking of Onchi, for example, would sketch out on occasion the rough sort of idea of the design. But for Sosaku Hanga artists like Onji, it was the creative process of carving and printing that really brought forth the work of art. And so for Onchi, Gen Yamaguchi, and many others, they would rearrange things on the block and, and things would come out differently on each impression. And so for an artist like Hasui, for example, his finished um, drawings or watercolors in preparation for woodblock prints are a in many times a, very precise in how they look and and basically Watanabe's artisans did a great job of translating those designs into woodblock prints. Now, obviously, Watanabe had some influence in the designs, and and it's interesting to note how many changes are made. Um, from the original drawing sketch to the finished print. But nonetheless, in order to produce a print, um, the, the artist had to produce a watercolor that would be then translated into a finished woodblock print. You know, they would trace out the design, the woodblock carvers would then carve 
out the design with the tracing that they made from the original. So the for Shinhanga artist, an original watercolor was very important. And, and it was a tool used by the, by the artisans as well to produce the finished print. And in here, we kind of see, you know, it's, it's a loose interpretation of the finished print. And again, I don't know where this book um, sort of belongs in the process of how this print is. I think this came a little bit later. That's at least what I think right now. But at some point, Oh no, Bakafu had to create a watercolor that looked almost exactly like this design for the woodblock carvers and printers to then uh, utilize in the, in the process of making this print. And that is different, um, again, um, versus their Sosaku Hanga car counterparts, where the printing process, even the carving, the carving is very important, but the carving and the printing both yielded surprises or, or, and when I say surprises, I mean surprises in the, in the form of creative inspiration where the artist went in a different direction than maybe a sketch may have outlined. So it's a very different process in how the artist produced these prints. And so I just wanted to highlight what a Shinhanga print uh, with, um, how the process of making a Shinhanga print looks like versus a Sosaku Hanga print. So, um, but in terms of this design, I want to point out this is a really nice early work. Um, this was redone, um, as far as I know, I think in the 50s, in the recarved or not recarved, but republished prints that are later. And I think I believe 58 was around when they made them. The margins are much larger on the print. And there's a red seal of a publisher from the 50s who produced it. Now, the original prints look like this. The, the margins are, are smaller. Here we have the publisher's information um, with a, a rectangular seal with the red seal as well. We have the artist's red seal with the signature. And it's tipped onto the original um, mats. This is how you you would find it originally, and so when you're when you're seeing these prints, you want to make sure that an early impression is the one you're looking at, um, particularly because this is the artist's masterpiece. It's his arguably the most most well known design associated with him, and um, you know so these prints are highly desirable, and a first state is a few thousand dollars more than a later printing from the 50s. A first state is 4,000 plus. A 50s impression is, I, w I wouldn't pay more than $1,500 for it. So it's very important to know what you're buying. And there's even, I believe there's even later impressions here and there. So again, you want to always find um, in, in, you know, focus on the earlier designs um, if you can. You know, if you're um, if you're interested in in Ono or any artist for that matter, you want to hone in on the earliest printings, and that way, um, your purchase will reward you down the road. Earliest printings always retain their value and, of course, reward you. Uh, whereas later printings don't often hold their value. And in the end, if you decide to sell it, you're, you're, you're going to take a hit. So anyway, um, that's a little bit more than, than just about this print, but I, I do always want to mention some tips for collectors um, here and there. So I want to just zoom in and, and show you the print so you can enjoy it. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to try angle this print so you could see the gold. Um, I mean, the gold, the silver that's printed over the the fins, and even the scales. Such a beautiful, beautiful printing. And one last time, I want to just show the design of the watercolor. 
It's interesting to see he has them in formation. He has one ahead and then these two quickly trailing behind. And in the finished print, we have the same sort of formation, but he, the, the, the fish are uh, angled differently. And there's a, almost like a, a stronger sense of drama. We, we have this fish sort of moving towards the front and this fish almost angled, almost as if you're going to, if it's going to hit this fish. It, it is an interesting sort of triangular composition. And I think this works much better than this but you could tell me what you think. So I'm gonna zoom in so you could see the watercolor one last time. And I'm gonna flip through the book also quickly so you could see the other designs. I like this design. I don't know why it's really cool. He doesn't look too happy. <laughs> he looks kind of angry. This is also a really great design. And then of course the calligraphy of the artist. And there's the, the book's cover. And then we have the original sort of outer shell of the album portfolio. And here's the finished print. I want to thank all of you for joining me on this installment of Woodblock Wednesday. We had a look at a really wonderful Onobakafu Woodblock print accompanied with an album of watercolor design uh, fish series. So uh, it, I think it's a really neat, um, uh, rare look at a couple of things that are, you know, you don't usually see in the marketplace. And the the fish print, the flying fish print, will be on my website um, coming up in the next month or so. So uh, please have a look out for that, of course. Uh, we're working hard on getting a new exhibition up. Um, so anyway, I want to thank all of you for joining me. And I hope to see you all next week for our next installment of Woodblock Wednesday. Until then, bye.